My name is Alison Smith and I'm Chief Curator of the National Portrait Gallery. I oversee the work of the curatorial and collections teams. And for the past three years we've been working on the redisplay of the National Collection. My name is Laura Popoviciu and I'm the pre-1900 curator at the UK Government Art Collection. So the room title Technological Transformation is a key work in the Inspiring People displays. It deals with a broad period of time, Britain from 1750 all the way through to 1850, which was at a time of great industrial change. And we really examine how the rise of industry spurred scientific research and inquiry. So we have Davy, we have Faraday, Charles Babbage, and then of course Ada Lovelace. Ada Lovelace is key to this display. A lot of the individuals I've mentioned have been men. And of course, we tend to think about the Industrial Revolution in terms of key male figures. But it's important to remember that women were involved. The first person to be called a scientist was in fact Mary Somerville. But in our collection, we can only represent these women through small prints and engraving. And in the room, they're completely overshadowed by their male contemporaries. So it's really important that we had a prominent portrait of a woman scientist. So we're very grateful to the Government Art Collection for lending the wonderful painting of her by Margaret Carpenter, which actually is the centrepiece of the section of the scientists. Laura, we're standing in front of the portrait of Ada Lovelace. Can you tell us about the artist, Margaret Carpenter? Sure. So the story of this portrait begins in 1835. This is the year when Ada gets married to William King. And they both commission two portraits of Ada and of William King. We know this from a list of paintings loaned to the National Portrait Gallery by Sarah Margaret Carpenter's son, Edward. And uh, there is a record of this painting uh, being started in 1835 and the prize that the artist received was £84. Uh, Sarah Margaret Carpenter uh, was born in Salisbury. She was mainly self-taught and she copied paintings by old masters uh, which she saw in Longford Castle. Uh, when she moved to London, she started frequenting different circles of art artists and she was a disciple of Thomas Lawrence. She was a very celebrated uh, portrait painter during her time. She displayed around 300 of her paintings at the Royal Academy exhibitions. She also uh, displayed her work uh, at the Paris Salon and the Paris exhibitions and at the British Institution of Art. Uh, and she was very um, recognised and celebrated during her time. There are about 1,100 paintings of her left to us. So I understand this painting was shown at the Royal Academy in 1836, the year it was painted. How was it received? This portrait of Ada had a big impact and we know this from uh, a lot of newspapers who reported on the richness of uh, colour, the softness of tone, uh, the elegance of the sitter. They also mentioned that um, had it not been for the artist's sex, uh, she would have been a Royal Academician. I think it's interesting talking about new portraiture as an art form. So we have the portrait by Margaret Carpenter, which shows her as an elegant society lady, about to launch herself into you know, society, into a ballroom or something. There are no signs of her being an academic or a scientist. And I think Ada Lovelace, what I understand, is not too happy with the portrait because she was seen to be sort of pretty society beauty rather than an mathematician or an intellectual in her own right. And so the, the photograph, the daguerreotype of Ada Lovelace, allows us to really appreciate what she looked like as a mature woman. And you can see the lines on her face, the concentration. You can see she is a sort of living, breathing human being. And the same applies to Babbage. The Babbage portrait is very sort of front and very sort of serious man, but you also get an understanding of him as a person, as an individual, on the daguerreotype. Yes, she was a figure way ahead of her time, wasn't she, maybe? Exactly. And of course came up with the first computer, Amagram. And um, this is why I think she's become more famous over time. We live in a computer age. And um, this is why she's often seen as being the founder, isn't she? Along with Babbage. But she's, her vision went further. It's something we've inherited and we appreciate today.
So what was the subsequent history of the painting after it was shown at the Royal Academy in 1836? And how did it end up at the Government Art Collection? So after it was displayed at the Royal Academy exhibition in 1836, we know that the portrait was uh, featured in an exhibition in 1899 at the Shepherds Brothers Gallery on uh, King Street. Um, and in 1953, uh, the Government Art Collection purchased this painting uh, from the collection of the fourth Earl of Lytton, who was related to the Lovelace family. So, uh, in terms of its provenance, this stayed in the family until 1953. In 1954, for about 10 years, the painting was on display at the British Ambassador's residence in Athens, together with a portrait of uh, Lord Byron, Ada's father, uh, made by Thomas Phillips. And afterwards, um, it featured in 11 Downing Street and in 10 Downing Street, so two very prominent locations where the Government Art Collection displays its works.